The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Ugh. What a bummer. Apologies, folks. Going through all that, my producer just texted me. Somehow my mic had been muted as we kick things off, and let's jump back. We got the S&Ps down by three as we kick things off. Apologies, 47.43. We jumped to those ADP numbers I was just discussing, but you couldn't hear me. 164,000 is the number that comes in for private payrolls, the most since August. Above all but one estimate, on wages, you come in at 5.4%, median pay bump in December from a year ago. For those that changed jobs, you rose 8%. What I was mentioning was, I remember when those numbers were at about 7%. If you stay in the same job, um, stay in the same job in like 14, 15% if you change jobs, both of them declining dramatically. Uh, slowest pace of wage growth for both figures since 2021 it's 2024 right so decent numbers across the board and uh one of the things they have chief economist at adp neither rich neil richardson saying wages did not drive the recent bottom inflation but pay growth has retreated and any risk of wage price spiral has all but disappeared so the trajectory in a good direction for wage growth Jobs numbers come in, ADP 164,000. We get non-farm payrolls on Friday. Excuse me, did I say Thursday? Uh, yeah, we get non-farm payrolls tomorrow on Friday, uh, 24 hours from right now. So a little bit of a precursor. And if the numbers align tomorrow, we'll see where we go. The market just pretty much taking it in stride. A little bit of volatility around that number at 830. But we're about five points from where you were trading at on that price level. With that in mind, we jump around. NASDAQ 100, pre-market session lows right near this level. 16,461. We're negative by almost half a percent. Dow, positive territory, 37,777. You're up by two-tenths percent or 78 points in the positive. And how about the Russell, man? Russell, off by four-tenths percent, eight points in the red, 1969.90 right now for the Russell. I mean... You back it up to last Thursday, and this thing has given up 125 points, which is about a 6% plus drop from where you were last Thursday. 6% from where you were last Thursday in the Russell. Is that even the recent high? Yeah, pretty much, 2097, so we're about 127 points off that price level. Still only back to where you were on December 12th for some context, December 13th. Is that a Fed day? I think it was. Okay, we jump to commodities. Bitcoin, recent volatility, back in the positive by almost $700. You're trading at 43760 You jump over to crude, up by 32 pennies at 7302 
You check out the volatility yesterday. We got a 69 handle. We're kind of testing the highs of Tuesday, right at 73.50. You make it to a high at 4 in the morning of 74 on the dot. We're trading at 73.10. Yeah, I'm seeing gas near $3 all over the place, which is pretty remarkable. Gold this morning. This is an hourly chart we have going on. Gold up by $4 on the session. That session from yesterday afternoon on gold, you make it as high as almost 2060 in the overnight session. We're trading at 2047. You jump to notes and bonds. What do we got? We got lower price and you got higher yield. You got the 10 year just above 3.99. Just above 3.99. We'll call it 4% to round it. <clears throat> and you see, in the overnight session, you were as high as 112.19. That's where you were in the middle of the day yesterday at about 2.30. Right now, we're coming into the lows of yesterday's session at 111.31. You're down by 18 ticks on the session, and you are pushing 3.99% on that 10-year. The 30-year is off a full point and seven ticks right now, 122.29. On the heels of some of that economic data, and you see 8.30, you know, we're five or six ticks below, or below where we were, as in yields ticking up a bit. The 10-year, you see a little bit of volatility on that 830 number as well. We were just above 112, but you see the move we had coming into that ADP number, right? Big moves in the overnight session. All right, what else we got? Dollar index. Jump over to the dollar index. We're seeing a little bit of higher yield. You're seeing a little bit of a dollar strength. 102.47 for the dollar index. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon, quite the pullback. What's going on with Amazon? I don't know. Apple's got another downgrade. Maybe somebody can help me out in the den. Do they got a downgrade as well, Amazon shares? Because that's quite a trade from 149 to 145. I think something's going on there. Yeah, we'll check that one out at one of the breaks. You jump over to Apple share. It's been a tough week for them. Going to be a tough day yet again as they're going to open almost $2 to the downside. That's more than a full percent. Apple shares from 194 to 182 from last Thursday. What a week can do. $12, okay? $12, folks, for a stock that has 15.5 billion shares outstanding. That is $180 plus billion dollars in market cap that has disappeared in one week alone. And on a percentage basis, you're talking about a 12-point move in, what is that, 6% itself? You see the Russell, right? The Russell I just talked about is off 6%. Apple is off 6% itself. Pretty remarkable, the percentages we've had when you combine this Thursday high of last week to the Friday pullback to the escalation this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, now Thursday as we kick things off. Microsoft shares, they're going to be flat on the open at 370.65. A little bit of a pop from Microsoft on the open yesterday. We jump over to Google shares, trading at 140.24. Walmart been extremely strong the last couple days. Quite the acceleration higher on Tuesday. You chopped around, pushed 160 for Walmart, and today you're going to open flat, 159.30 for Walmart shares. Target had pulled back recently. Yeah, tough day for Target yesterday. Not quite the same deal as Walmart, right? When you talk about potential winners and losers of an economy that might be a little bit stressed in terms of consumers, costs, uh, making the dollars go as far as you can. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps flat, NASDAQ 100 off by 68. We got the Dow up by 99. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man Kevin Hicks from the Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures negative by two right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 71. Dow up by 95 right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on TFNN. Check it out. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team. They're usually talking about three different equities, all of them using defined risk and options. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. It's the best way to learn. I've learned myself so much over the years. Kevin Hinks, we got some ADP jobs numbers ahead of Friday numbers this morning. Market a little bit weak yet again. Uh, what are you looking at in this market? Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, yeah, you know, data coming out slightly stronger. Jobless claims, real strong number out of jobless claims at 202,000. ADP came out higher than expected, 164,000. Tommy, whenever I look at the ADP employment number and I see a number bigger than expected, I always look for the leisure and hospitality numbers. And there it was, 59,000 leisure and hospitality jobs to add it. So besides that, it was a pretty benign number. It was, it, there wasn't anything that stuck out. Construction was 24,000. Financial services activities, 18,000. A couple losers. Manufacturing, 13,000. You know, a couple other small losers. But all things considered, Tommy, this number sets up the expectations for tomorrow. And, you know, I was just talking about this on the air here. And when you're trying to figure out what the market's doing and, you know, it taking in a bunch of data and digesting a bunch of data, know this. On, the, on December 28th, the S&P hit 4793. On, on December 27th, the 10-year hit 3.78. There's been a slow, gradual up move in the 10-year yield. There's been a slow, gradual down move in stocks. And so when things are confusing and when you're looking to try to figure out, just go back to that. Keep it simple and understand that higher yields mean lower stocks. 
Yeah, you got the correlation back in vogue, and uh, I was looking at the charts as you were walking it through it, and boy, it was quite a run, man. I mean, we all know it, but just when you look at it on the charts in terms of the run in the S&Ps from October – on um, the thinkorswim platform, I have a low of 41.22 on October 27th, 48.41. I mean, we're barely chopping around near those lows. A little bit of a pullback. Uh, but nonetheless, we look forward to tomorrow, Kevin. I know ADP can vary sometimes even greatly from non-farm payrolls. But are you looking for any surprises, any expectations? I know the wages were declining, um, not accelerating, I should say, right, at, at a rate lower than we've seen since 2021. Are you looking forward to tomorrow? What are you looking for for that number? Yeah, you know, for me, it's all about wages, Tommy, because it's all about the inflation data. And the wage expectations now are for up 0.3 month over month and 3.9% year over year. Now, that's down a tenth from last month on both sides. So if that holds, how does the market think of that? Is inflation coming down at a pace? Tommy, the March, what we learned from the Fed minutes, Yesterday was that the March uh, rate cut is simply not in the plans of the Fed right now. So some event would have to happen. And so that March rate cut that had CME probabilities of 80 percent is down to 60 percent this morning and, frankly, going lower, Tommy. So, uh, you know, they, they did say they want to cut rates, but it was the second half of the year, Tommy, and this market – has way more rate cuts built in and, frankly, a March rate cut built in, Tommy. Yeah, we, I have to recalibrate my brain like most of us, right, with the word cut versus hike, um, and we'll see where they go. But the tenure, right at basically 4%, a little bit of a lift from some of those lows that you were talking about. We talked about some of the FANG stocks, um, the Magnificent 7, right, the Apple's kind of a pullback. You got Amazon off today again. Um, is that something you're still watching with those those tech stocks that let us hire I me? Mean, some pretty dramatic pullbacks. I was looking at Apple. You're $10 off where this thing was trading at just not that long ago, like four or five days, let alone the high of 199 You're talking about a company with 15-plus billion shares, and you trade off 10 bucks in four days. Quite, quite a little bit of a pullback on some of these leaders, the biggest equity out there, Apple. Yeah, and Apple's got another downgrade this morning. So at least to start the day, that stock will be under pressure. So, yeah, Apple off its highs, about 5% off its highs. That's pretty substantial amount of money being moved around. But Apple's always going to be that way. And when the overall market is soft, you know, and Apple news, remember the Barclays downgrade leading the news. Now you've got, I believe, Piper Sandler uh, downgraded them this morning. So, yeah, Apple's heavy. That, you know, yields are, are, are higher this morning fairly sharply. Uh, that'll affect stocks. I think that took some of the pre-market bids out of stock. So another day, Tommy, where higher yields are probably going to mean stocks have very little inertia on the upside. I like it. We'll see how it goes. We got uh, seven minutes till the opening bell. We got three and a half hours almost until fast market. Kevin, do you guys have any equities you're talking about at 12 noon on fast market today? Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Constellation Brands. Uh, that's Corona. That's Modelo. That's uh, Pacifico in terms of beer. Uh, then we're going to co c cover Micron and PayPal today, one of the payment stocks. So Constellation Brands, which has earnings, and then Micron and PayPal today, Tommy. Constellation Brands, yeah, they have quite a portfolio. Beers, um, some good wines out there, I think, right? Kim Crawford, Miomi, I'm looking at that, of course. Corona, um, like you said. Kevin, we appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. We don't talk to you tomorrow, so we'll talk to you on Tuesday. Can't wait to see where this market is by then, but we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man. Have a great one. Have a great weekend, okay? Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. Fast Market from the Schwab Network. We're fortunate to have it right here on Tiger TV at 12 noon every single market day. And you heard it. They're talking about some nice stocks and Constellation. Uh, the run that this thing had, right, up to 273 last year. A strong, strong stock uh, in the longer run with the portfolio that they have. I mean, look at this equity and how it's handled, right? 2011, $18. You make a high of 235 Now, you can make the case we're still sitting at 2018 prices where you were. But boy, things got decimated um, with the market and remarkable when you look at, right, there's your COVID pullback. You came into 2020 at 186. You're sitting at 241, man. You were up to 273. Um, 
it is a strong equity. I'm looking forward to seeing what they say on fast market. They also have some exposure to cannabis, although I'm not sure that's doing anything for anybody anytime soon. You jump over to Canopy. I mean, look at these stocks, right? And I mean, we see it in Florida. I have friends, of course, and the they, they talk about um, everything is very cheap, very, very difficult to make money in that industry when it's something you can grow and there's a race to the bottom for pricing. And uh, my dad's talked about it before, and I think he nailed it in terms of it's going to be like a liquor, like potentially a high quality beer in terms of name recognition, branding, right? What it comes with. Maybe you separate your way in some capacity, but beyond that, it is a straight out commodity that you grow in your yard. Prices coming down, very difficult to make profits in that environment. I mean, these these equities, man. Remember when they just went bonkers? Um, and that's this is this year, okay? So be careful, man. I'm sure a lot of people got sucked into this thing thinking that this was the next big ramp up, okay? And and it was not, right? You can't even find the acceleration this thing had this year when you look at where these equities were pre-split in 2021. That spike to $20 doesn't even show up. Canopy has been so high in the past, remarkable. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back for the opening bell. We'll be back in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you got the S&Ps coming into that price point at a basically pre-market session low, right? We come in five minutes prior to the market. You trade to a low of 47.37. We're negative by six points right now in the open at 47.40. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 74 points. That's half a percent in the red. We'll call it the Dow up by 39. That's one-tenth percent positive. You got the Russell was down to 1965. I say it. You talk about volatility, man. Russell just popped almost 15 points from where it was trading at at 9 o'clock in the morning. We jump to commodities. Crude, 72 handle, 72.91 for the price of crude. You jump over to that gold contract. Gold up about $5 right now. And we have a caller on the line. Perfect. We got Mike in Seminole. Mike, good morning. What are we talking about this morning? Mike in Seminole. Mike from Somerville, buddy. Somerville. There we go. Good old Somerville. Oh, we'll get the producer on it. I love it. It's that good old Somerville accent, man. Uh, good morning, Mike. What's happening? How you doing, pal? I haven't talked to you for years. I'm doing great. Thanks you so much. For you, come on. you got to remember Mike from Somerville when I used to call you and your father years ago. Of course I do, man. Of course I do. I hear that voice. I love it, man. Thank you so much for calling and listening, for sure. How's Boston this morning? How you, you doing? Guys, are we getting a storm up doing, there? What's pal? going on? I just want to say Happy New Year, and I haven't talked to you since you had your baby, buddy. I haven't talked to you. I love it, man. This is so cool. I appreciate you calling, and uh, I, I was just thinking he's going to be three in less than a month, Mike. How, how crazy is that time? Pretty remarkable, man. That's how long it's been since I talked to you two, Tommy. Man, Remember crazy. when you did your show, you and your father? I used to call every week. Of course, man. Of course. Of course. It's great. So what are we, listen, what are we looking listen, at? I, I talked to Jason one day. I talked to Jason. He said he was moving to uh, Salem, Mass., and we talked for about an hour and a half on the phone when I was buying my Tiger dolls. Did he tell you guys? Uh, I'm not sure. What's, he may have. I'm not what's sure. What's the, guy, what's the guy's Jacob. name that, that Jacob. Just covers for your father? Jacob. 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 Yeah. I talked to him for about an hour and a half one day. Me and him were talking about he's moving, he might be moving to it. Salem, Mass. or something like that. See, I got to hear your voice, Mike. You know, I remember I mentioned it, but I got to hear your voice, and then it brings it all back. Um, so now it all it all puts together, and I remember it, of course. Well, listen, Sorry, man. Happy you're doing New a great job, you man. You are doing a great job on you're this awesome. show. You have come so far. It's unbelievable how good oh, you are. You're awesome. You're awesome, Mike. You're awesome. You're quite a lift, uh to, to me at 9.30 in the middle of the show, man. I appreciate it. So let's talk about crude. You want to talk about crude, right? What are we doing with crude? What do you yeah, think about I do. I do. What are you thinking? What are you thinking, brother? Dude, listen, we, uh, you know, I was talking about earlier in the week when you got, you know, Iran sending ships to the Red Sea and you got geopolitical tensions where they are, man, and you can't get above 73 bucks right now. Um, really tough to get excited on the bullish side when you look at that type of perspective, man, you know, you're coming into an election year. There's validity there, right? Is is crude. So so it's real tough for me to find um, a reason to go super bullish on, on that type of accord. You know, imagine if you were bullish, right? And, and I don't know if you are you bullish. Are you trading this yet? Or what are you looking to do? Uh, I'm in a couple of uh, direction, uh, small, real small on a couple okay. of direction funds, the uh, ERX and uh, okay. one, one other one. Just, so yeah yeah but you know the uso buddy i get in i make a few bucks and i literally get out because it just goes down the next day it's unbelievable it just doesn't yeah, want to go it's, you know and if you want to trade it for a little bit of volatility that's great man because you know you know you we were just at 69 dollars yesterday we're at 73 today right and we we're at 73 on tuesday so you're getting four dollar moves on a 73 dollar commodity right now um but boy, I you know you talk about frustrating if you if you're bullish on this thing over the weekend and you see the headlines out there that they're sending Iranian tankers to the Red Sea and you you open the market on Monday and crude is lower, what do you how do you how do you deal with that one right that is, that is a message man that I would be listening to, um, yeah so so for what it's worth man you know oh no no listen I, I what you just said is exactly you could have been reading my mind just now because exactly what you're saying Tom. Like, it's amazing that it will not go up with all this stuff going on. It blows my mind. You know, I, fi I filled up my gas tank yesterday, man, and the, the, it's 301. And I'm not even searching out cheap gas. You know, you just pull up at a gas station, 301. <laughs> um, 
which is bonkers, man. You know, in the in the long term, well, with everything going on, it feels like it's a little bonkers in terms of just pretty affordable, man. With all the geopolitical, the Red Sea stuff going on, the tankers, you know, I ran out there, um, et, et cetera, et cetera. Of course. I so what else is going at, on? Listen, I, winter, I, I, man. I wanted how, to how talk is, crude, but I really wanted to just say hi to you and just this, check in with you right now. This is going on. It's been how a long time, is, buddy. How was your New Year, Mike? How was your New Year? How was everything going, man? How was your holiday? I, I had a very, I had a very, very quiet New Year, and we went for Chinese. We didn't order it because you got to wait about seven hours for it. But uh, we 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 found a place. We waited fifty. Tom, I took a video. There were seventy-two bags of of of, of Chinese food on the shelves in the place night. we went to. We went to dinner. Night. No, Tell eighty-two, right. eighty-two yeah. huge bags of Chinese food. It was That's insane. Awesome. You should have seen it. It was crazy. The good stuff. The good stuff. Mike, man, you made you guys, my morning. You guys Thanks do so much Chinese for calling. Down there? You do Chinese down there oh, like yeah. we do up here on, for, on New Year's Eve? For sure. Listen, I had an early night, too. I was in bed at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve, man. I was up at 6 o'clock the next day with Tommy, but that's beautiful, too. Um, but, yes, of course we got Chinese. There you go. Down. Sure, for sure. There you go, brother. You got the uh, you you got the little one now. You got no no more of those nights. That's it for I you. Know, you know, it comes <laughs> and goes. The years come. I was saying to somebody, man, when he was little, the last couple of years, I actually did make it to the midnight because they're so small. They're they're sleeping all the time, right? They're not. But now he's almost three, man. He's a little man, so he goes to bed. He wakes up. You know, we're on a good schedule, so it works. It all works for sure. Yeah, and then you're gonna have to stay up late with him. When he, when he said, "My daughter's 15 now, buddy. My daughter's 15." That's awesome, man. That's this, awesome. This is crazy. You're gonna, you yeah, see, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to stay up with him now someday when he gets older. Now and you're, you're gonna have to stay up with I him. See it, man. That's, what, that's why I cracked up. You know, I was staying up when he was one and two, but now he's three. Now it's a different cycle, and then they, well, they, as they age, we know for sure. Mike, thanks you, so brother. much for calling, man. I love it. So great to hear All right, from you, brother. All right, I love you. I'll talk to Buddy. you soon. All right, pal. Thank you. Okay, Mike. take care. That's awesome, folks. If you didn't listen to the program, this guy used to call every day, man. Mike from Somerville. Good old Somerville, Mass, man. Somerville, Mass. Uh, Got to love it. Got to love it. Yeah, because, whew. you know, you see all the memes, right? There is something remarkable in terms of how COVID, not as much progress, trips not taking place, not seeing your family, the years, um, it feels like, and I know it always feels like time is speeding up, right? But it does feel like that was March of 2020, which was almost four years ago that COVID hit. Yeah, March of 2020, which was almost four years ago that COVID hit. Um, and, of course, things morphed pretty quickly, right? And then there was a status quo, and it feels like that was just an extra quick um, four years, man. Remarkable. Um, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, and I'm not the only one. It is just remarkable, man. And it goes right just like that. Isn't that cool, though? You go just like that, right? I hear that voice. Of course I remember Mike from Subville. Mike, I love you, man. Thanks for calling so much. Makes my morning. Got to love it. All right. S&Ps, we catch a little bit of a lift on the open. We're back to flat. We're positive by one. S&Ps up by one point, 47.48. NASDAQ, the only index in the red right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll jump through some of those different equities. We're going to take a look at Amazon. Amazon down 2.6% to kick off the trading day. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. We're flat right now at 47.47. NASDAQ slightly in the red off by about 60 points. Yeah, you jump over to Amazon, man. Not sure exactly what's going on with Amazon, but you drive down to 144. We were just trading at 154 a week ago. You closed out yesterday at 148.50 almost. So we're solid $3.20 or 2.2% to the red. Uh, as I mentioned, not exactly sure with what we got going on in Amazon. Just maybe a little bit of weakness. Yeah, Target shares are basically up 1% right now. We talked about Walmart's been holding up pretty well right now. We jump around to some of those other retailers, TJ Maxx. Yeah, something's going on with Amazon, man. Microsoft up by a quarter percent. Google shares down by two tenths percent. You jump over to Apple on the heels of that second downgrade off by 1.1%. Yeah, Piper Sandler downgrading them. Barclays started the downgrade action to kick off 2024, that's the acceleration you see when futures open coming into 2024. You closed out 2023 at 192 and change. Yeah. A few days later, you're at 182 and change. You're trading at 182.20 off 1.1% for Apple shares. But yeah, a couple deals with Amazon here I was looking at. Now, number one, you have the article out here today, last night, technically. Not sure this is what's driving the equity down, but this story out last night from Bloomberg Technology, TikTok. And maybe this is the deal. Maybe this is what uh, is driving it. Maybe they put this out and they may have, but I'm not sure. But you're talking about TikTok, big dites, excuse me, bite dances. TikTok aims to grow the size of its U.S. e-commerce business tenfold to 17.5 billion. Well, if it's tenfold, that would mean it's at about $1.75 billion right now. And that would be a remarkable yearly acceleration. Think about it. But if anybody could do it, it's probably a social media company that's dominating the world run by the Chinese government. Right? Makes sense. 2024 merchandise volume goal for the U.S. version of TikTok. And that's going to meld online entertainment with impulse buying was discussed in internal meetings in recent weeks and may still change depending on how the business goes, said people who asked not to be named. Quite an ambitious target, to put it lightly. And so that's going to be a clash with Amazon, but it's also going to be a clash with Timu and Shine, who uh, made huge strides, of course, among younger American shoppers. 
TikTok is counting on its social media reach and the appeal of viral videos to hook buyers. Last year on track to amass $20 billion in global merch merchandise value, with Southeast Asia contributing the bulk of the sales. Now they're looking to do that in the U.S. with 17.5. Pretty remarkable, man. Yeah, they go into just bite dance and TikTok a little bit more. But TikTok shop lets users buy items while scrolling through a perpetual feed of short videos and live streams within its main social media app, hoping consumers use it as an alternative to Amazon or I'm sure Shine, etc. Yeah, so stay on the radar for that one. Now, one of the articles I never really talked about, and this was up last week with the holidays, so December 27th they were talking about this, to December 28th, so about a week ago, right? Yeah, last Wednesday or Thursday. So Amazon Prime, they're going to start plowing ads into TV shows and movies. It's an included service with Prime, and now it's going to come with ads. And if you don't want ads, you're going to have to pay an extra $36 a year. Only $3 a month, but that adds up, man. So everybody's going to see ads. I don't think a lot of people, unless you're some kind of diehard Amazon Prime video streamer, but not many are. You got some good shows on there, I'm sure. But it's kind of just one of those added extra perks that you get with Amazon. They've already segmented the music part because really they have to there. The royalties they're paying, you say you have to, but you could say the same thing with video, right? So now they're going to do a video. You're going to have video that's included with Prime, and then you're going to have the additional step up. Now, they have said that they're going to have less ads than normal, okay? It aims to have meaningful, meaningfully fewer ads than traditional TV and other streaming providers. And uh, then they put some spin on that, that they're going to allow us to continue investing in compelling content and keep increasing that investment over a long period of time. That's implying that they don't have that money unless they charge you, which you could make the case that they probably do have that money. But nonetheless... Uh, that's an interesting one in terms of where the whole industry is going, right? Ads. Even something like Amazon Prime Video, which Bezos just has as like a cherry on top of your service to keep you in that ecosystem, even something like that, they're going to start plowing ads into, uh, which you know people are not the biggest fan of, right? Okay, this one was interesting. So Eli Lilly, right, today. Uh, what is it? L-L-Y? What's their symbol? Yeah, LLY. So this thing's up 8 tenths percent. You were up at 631. Huge volatility on the open. Their news is they're starting a website to hook you up directly with a telehealth provider to get you your weight loss drugs as fast as humanly possible. Uh, sounds like a bit great business idea. Not sure that's where the healthcare industry should be going. Uh, and let's pull up the article here. Yeah, so here's the article. Yeah, here we go. So this is just NBC News. I was reading about it on some of the financial websites this morning. But Eli announced on Thursday a new website that's going to allow patients to get a weight loss drug prescription through a telehealth provider that will improve access to the extremely popular and effective drugs, including Zepound. Zepound? It's pretty interesting. It's going to be a blockbuster drug, and these things are so hard to pronounce when you read them sometimes. I'm sure we'll be seeing ads on television for them. The new website called Lily Direct, and we have that website up here. Here's a look at that website. Obesity is a disease that can challenge your positive lifestyle changes. Explore telehealth. Find in-person care. Explore pharmacy services. I mean, they're hooking you up directly, right? Why not? The FDA approved that drug. The drug is the latest interest, entrant into the field of powerful and pricey meds called GLP-1 agonists, I believe it is, right? Um, yeah, Manjaro is one I know. Wigovi is the other one I know, and this is one as well. And this is the interesting one here, right? CEO of Eli Lilly. We're used to buying consumer goods directly from manufacturers all the time on online websites. It really hasn't been an option that's been provided before per, for prescription drugs. Well, do I have to tell you about the potential pitfalls of allowing consumers to be routed from manufacturers to their drugs, which are prescribed by doctors for sale. It obviously incentivizes it, right? Uh, and it's incentivized, but nonetheless, it's always usually you visit your doctor, that doctor is prescribing you drugs, 
But when the doctor is getting all his business straight from the drug company, which is what's going to be going on here, um, be aware of how that goes. For the profits, if you can do it, why the heck not? Why aren't more people doing it um, in terms of the drug industry, right? If you can have websites that hook you up directly with a telehealth provider so that you can get the drugs that they are providing under prescription when is necessary, you can tell that they were having meetings saying, hey, listen, everybody's going to want these weight loss drugs. Let's make sure we get over that impediment of them having to seek out a doctor which they may not have, right? You might not have a relationship with a doctor already. Um, yeah, so Eli Lilly, quite a long-term chart. There's your long-term chart, man. Be careful on that one. A lot of optimism priced in, probably rightfully so, but Eli Lilly up another $3.50 to $621. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now. You're basically flat. You're positive by one point. We're trading at 47.47. NASDAQ 100, we're still in the red. You get the Dow up by 103 right now, 37,801. Bitcoin up almost $1,000. We're back above 44,000. Crude, we talked to our man Mike from Somerville this morning. Mike, thanks for calling in again. If you're still listening, man, 
folks, give us a call. I know I don't put that number out as much as I should if you don't get in today because the program's about to wrap up. We'll be right back here tomorrow morning, 877-927-6648. Crude, 7271. I like the price at the gas pump. Can't deny that one. Uh, mortgage rates. We're going to finish it up with mortgage rates. Interesting conversation here. You take a look at an article in the journal out this morning. We've had mortgage rates rising because we've had treasury yields rising, right? One of the other reasons that mortgage rates have risen is because the gap between the traditional tenure and what you're getting on a 30-year mortgage has widened dramatically during this period of Fed tightening, okay, and stress on the economy. They, they need a larger gap between that tenure and what they're going to give you for a 30-year mortgage to accommodate the potential volatility that they have to price in, okay? Take a look at where this is. This is the differential between the 30-year fixed mortgage rate and the 10-year treasury. In more normal times, okay, you're talking about 1.7%. Maybe a 2% number is a fair number. You say the 10-year, where's the 10-year? Well, if the 10-year is at 4%, your mortgage is going to be 6%, right? Right. Well, where's the 10-year right now? The 10-year is at 4%. Where is your mortgage? It's not at 6%, but it might be on its way to 6% even if the 10-year stays where it is because one of the largest stresses on mortgages has been that differential between 30-year fixed mortgage rate and the 10-year treasury yield. You see that number getting up to 3.1% in June, okay, and we're back to 2.75. We're probably going lower from there if things go forward, as you may expect. But we get some of that numbers tomorrow. Non-farm payrolls, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. We'll be on the air at 9 o'clock. Stay tuned today, folks. The day is young. As our man Basil Chapman says, Basil's coming up next with the opening call. We got markets. S&P up by two. Thanks so much for joining me this morning, folks. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a great Thursday. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.